Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another 3D printing video. A good friend of mine dropped this message and wished to cosplay at PAX on the 7th, giving me three to four weeks, and produced this interesting link for an ISIA beacon from the game The Division with full references and STL file. A multi part multimedia project that requires a large 3D printing bed to be finished. Pro Process painted and either potentially lit up or showing some sort of light effect physically. With the very little amount of time I had, I was uh, quite fortunate to have this massive PDF document with a write up of the color assembly, the electrical schematics, which I don't have the time to program or build, and photos to finish the job without learning about the law universe or object which is a rarity. I know absolutely nothing about the game or the lore, the division uh, besides what my friend shared and the fact that this costume requires people to grab what they're wearing and find in their household, arm up and do some sort of uh, resistance or uh, terrorism attacks. The 3D models are well drafted and sliced quite easily. I've put everything on my Creality Ender 5 plus a bed. The 3D printer is a bit uh, old and showing sign of wear though still produces prints quite well. I've got quite a process of uh, printing nicely with the BL Touch uh, no longer working and this is involved leveling the bed by hand with the Z-axis screws. It does take about four or five minutes at the start of the print as I'm demonstrating here and as I'm laying down the first bed I try to get that nice squish by eye and after that I slow down the print speed to about 20% where there is a bit too much heat and it strings between two to three models that are on the build plate but I get some quite nice sharp detailed proportioned uh, prints that do not fall apart and with a fairly good z-axis artifacts markings. With this dodgy method I also find that larger heavier prints do not put off the uh, bed and start to lose detail as the pressure is applied down and I have not really experienced any failed prints for a while. A hairspray is used to asphyxiate everything to the bed which takes a while to uh, pop off where I either have to chill the bed or pry it off. All the parts came out very well, no warpage, uh, again with a bit of stringing and uh, weird brims which is from the adjustment of the zero layer squish. Considering that material time and power consumption from a 3D printer is reasonably cheap, my go-to in the settings slicing and g-code according to the experiments I've done many years ago is uh, very thick walls about uh, two millimeter to hold its integrity and structure, very light on infill to reduce uh, weight but enough for scaffolding to hold any ceiling and roof parts. Minimal supports where I would have to cut the model in parts and would rather deal with gluing together and seams than cleaning up excess supports. And the print process going very slow at about 20 to 30 percent. This may drag prints out for many hours to days but this does not uh, push for layer shift, uh, belt stretching or the distortion of of the bits. Then I let it go and I don't touch the bed or mess with printer for as long as I can. A uh, beautiful thing is, is if I do turn it on or off, I allow maximum amount of time for the bed to heat up before uh, movement uh, in case it subtracts or expands. This will lead to minimal faults. With the cleanup process, you still get a lot of layers and artifacts. Uh, this allowed me to cut any of the supports and melt any of the webbing. Uh, get some very high grit sandpaper, uh, 40, 60 grit and grind down the z-axis, almost scraping it, followed by hitting it with a heat gun or a blowtorch and melting those layers. That's where the thick walls come in and it's not going to distort or melt in on itself. Assembly has started. Uh, large pieces I like to glue together with contact adhesive, uh, smaller parts super glue. This one needs to be assembled and put back together for the in inclusion of parts inside. There's a bit of uh, multimedia with uh, a coil, some wires 
and a clear component for the light to go through made out of food packaging. The problem with FMD additive 3D printing is no matter how good your machine is and how perfect the print is, the artifacts will be seen regardless and that's where hand tools and time is needed to be invested and the more you do it, the more efficient and quicker you get in it with the right grits of sandpaper and uh, using a ream for any parts that uh, join holes and finishing. Putties and popular filling products can be deployed and bought but I find that a uh, filler primer from an automotive store works the absolute best by caking it on, rescribing any panels and details with a cone tipped scribe and going to town with a, a higher to medium grit sandpaper and even polishing it off later on if needed. Paint is unforgiving especially gloss and even metallic and it will show any of the minor blemishes and with 3D printing being a repetitive motion it just tells and it's automatically known that the object is 3D printed. With very good workmanship you can make it into a smooth surface where it looks like it's been fabricated or made but even so there's always one or two tiny telltale signs here and there. It's how much time and polishing you do choose to put in which you can get near perfect. In this case small things that I don't want to deal with like uh, buttons and small components I just swapped out with things that I can salvage from rubbish and small containers and packaging and whatnot, which gave it an even better almost injection molded effect. Again with time restraints I didn't treat this with, as a scale model but more so as a large real life in person one to one object and hit it with a rattle can with a little bit of hand painting for variation then screwed the whole thing together. Automotive lacquer paint is my choice as it gives a realistic metal luster. Shortly starting my project, my friend also wanted this beacon wristwatch that would uh, pair up nicely and it's uh, printed out fairly okay by going slow and gentle. I considered doing it at a resin but the temperature didn't uh, agree to it. Sanded it up, hit it with the blowtorch and several layers of filler primer. Uh, not much sanding did occur though I had a few junk wristwatches and salvaged the band. Heased it all together in hoping that it would look kind of okay. Uh, this was definitely rushed and running out of paint I had some mixed up uh, gunmetal and airbrushed it all up for something that looks fairly passable. My heart was set on this lighting up and it's important story and effect wise it comes up as orange and not red. I bought this LED torch in the hope that I can dismantle it, uh, paint the LEDs clear orange and stick it inside. Which is uh, bright enough but not for a haul of an event at a cosplay function. It would be replaced with orange dyed material. It is also important that the beacon itself attaches to a backpack and is fairly stable and won't fall off. I had this velcro which is used to bind up electrical cables go through the slips rather than the radio clip. And finally with a little time left I used a lot of contact adhesive to bind the metal to a band to the actual piece and it all set and hardened in time to all clip together without falling off and be wearable at the event. A realistic watch band was the best choice. All items were handed off to the client in time for his event which he was able to wear successfully, enjoy himself and later on schedule a photo shoot with his entire ensemble. A little rough but not too difficult. I really appreciate and enjoy the uh, design. The cleanup was good practice, not a design of mine and painting we won't even really uh, talk about. Uh, put all together with my friend's uh, costume and uh, plastic arm. It uh, falls together quite well and really fleshed out uh, story-wise. I did post this across uh, social media and people believed it as a character from uh, the game depicted. Uh, that concluded my commission. I got a little bit of a nice kickback and a video that I was able to produce and share. Uh, plus highlight uh, my mate uh, Mick Waghorn for taking these lovely photos and my friend Amal for modelling. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time. Stay tuned for further content, all of the reference material, files and models are in the description section down below. It is far from my best work but sometimes we have to have filler content and something that is just a quick turnaround build. Catch you guys later.